Hello friends, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about time-based calculations within Power BI using DAX, but not using calendar columns. We are going to talk about how to do it using fiscal columns or financial year, quarter, month. Let's go and see how this is possible. The method I'm going to show you in this video is a still preview uh, at the time of recording this video. It might be generally available when you are watching it. Uh, I'm explaining it, but right now, if you want to implement it right at the time of publishing this video, this only works in Power BI Desktop. It does not work in Power BI Service, uh, but very soon it will be available over there as well. This is using one of the options called Calendar Option in Power BI. And how this works is that you go and define a calendar uh, table as a calendar um, and and then within that you'll go and define your calendar options such as saying this is my year column this is my quarter column this is my month column and you can have multiple calendars this is uh, immensely helpful when you have calendar options that are not the normal like a calendar year standard that starts from 1st of January ends at 31st of December. Uh, it might be something that is like 445 calendar, 454 calendar, uh, fiscal calendar. All of these are possible. So how does this work? I'm jumping into my Power BI demo over here. I have a sales table already. I'm going to import a, a date table. So the date table can come from many places. I'm using my script for generating a date dimension. It's a Power Query script. You can download it from Radicat website. It is available uh, for free. You can download it from our website. Um, I'm going to say get data from a blank query. And in here, I'll go and paste that query. This, um, um, this query can come from anywhere, this date dimension. You can even have it coming from uh, your SQL Server database. It doesn't matter where it comes from. So I'll go in my case into advanced editor. Here I'll go and paste that script. This script gives me capability to do um, to customize it like for example i want the start year and end year to be matching my data points so my data starts from 2005 so that is why i set as start and end 2008 but this could be fully customizable uh, a start of fiscal year at the moment as you can see is july um, which then this would generate fiscal columns i'll click on done this is creating a date table for me uh, having all the columns that I need, such as date, year, start of the year, start of the month, month itself as a number, uh, name of the month, the day name, every single attribute of a date is already created in this date table. Now, this date table, as I said, can come from anywhere. It doesn't really matter where it comes from. I'm going to call it date. And then I say close and apply. So this date table will be also added in my semantic model as a date uh, table, but Power BI is not still aware of this as being a date table. And I'm going to mention to you how we can uh, use it for a date calculation. Then I'll go and say, well, for this uh, model, I'm going to create relationships. I have the date table, I have the sales table, and the relationship in here would be based on the order date, if I can find it here, here it is, date to the order date, one too many relationship. So I have a date table that filters my sales table. So far everything is uh, all good to go. Now I want to go and write my calculations for fiscal year, such as total year to date, um, quarter to date. These types of calculations at the moment, like the old method, they can be calculated using time intelligence calculations, but you need to have a date table. You have to mark your table as a date table. Uh, that is the older version of doing it. Now, the method that I'm about to show you is working uh, with the fiscal one. So I'm going to show you this method. To get this method working, first, you have to make sure that you are not using O2 time intelligence table. So I'll go to the file, options, and settings. And under options, I'll disable the O2 date time. O2 date time is creating 
default date table in Power BI. If you don't know what that is, I have explained it in another video. You can go and check it out. It's a good uh, option for prototype reports, but not good option for production ready, enterprise ready reports. So I'll take that off, meaning that I'm not relying on the default date tables here. I have my own date table and that is the table that I'm going to use in my analytics. Then I'll go and create a visual here very simple visual. I'll add a table visual. In this table visual, I'll get uh, attributes of the date, uh, which in this case, they are going to be year, quarter, month. Now, uh, as you can see, they have auto summarized tables, auto summarized fields in here. So I'm going to default, I'm going to uh, change their auto summarization to be none. This is also something you can do in the model tab and to do it, uh, you'll just select using control key, you select all of these, then you go to the advanced section and say, do not summarize. This is of course setting it in a way that when you drag and drop it in a visual, it will not summarize them, it will show the actual values. So then I'll go and add a normal calendar year here as a value. This adds the calendar year. Then I'll go and add quarter, then I'll go and add month, which is month of the year number. So these are all added like this. I can then go and add a measure such as sales amount. In the fact internet sales, I'll add sales amount here so that this shows me that calculation. So for, as you can see in here, for every month, in here and it, uh, the data starts from Ju July 2005. In quarter three, we have a sales value, $473,000, $500,000, and it goes like that. Now, I want to do this uh, year-to-date calculations using this, but not based on normal calendar columns, based on fiscal columns. So what we do for this? For this, we of course need to have a date table that has fiscal columns. So here you see that in my date table, I already have fiscal year, fiscal quarter, fiscal month columns in here. You might just have quarter and year, which is absolutely fine. It would work in that way as well. So you need to have these columns. They have to be calculated. In my case, fiscal year starts from July and that is what I set in the uh, script to generate the date table. Then what I'll do is I'll go to my date table and this is the part that is still in preview mode at the time of recording this. I'll go to here and I say calendar options. In the calendar options I can go and define a calendar. I'll go and define a calendar. I'll call this fiscal. So my fiscal calendar is going to have some columns in it. So first I want to have a year column. Now, because this is fiscal, I'm not using my normal calendar year column here. I'm going to use my fiscal year column. And then I'll go and add another column here, which would be quarter of the year. And for that, I'll go and use fiscal quarter. And this can go on. I'll go and add month, of the year, if I can find it, here it is, month of the year. And for that, I would also go and add fiscal month. And if you have equivalent of these in other languages, things like that, you can go and select that as well, such as here, I can go and select month name if I want to. Uh, it's not mandatory though. The associated column is more like a uh, optional option, whereas primary column is the main thing that you have to set. When you set this, you can click on validate data. This would tell you if you have any errors in your data, such as for example, the order of the values or some of the values might be missing, all of those, it will tell you. So I have created this, I say save and close. This is one calendar that I have added. This works for fiscal. You may want to add also one for your normal calendar um, columns, which you can do that as well. Like I can call this one standard. And once I define that, I say, well, year is year. I'll say quarter of the year is quarter. I should have a quarter here. Yep, it is. And then I might say, well, month of the year is also month. And I also go and select month name in here too. If I can find it, 
month name uh, and you can keep going at days and things like that as well but it is good for now I'll validate this data save and close so you see I have two calendars fiscal and standard now how can I use that I'll close this Previously, in previous way of doing time intelligence in Power BI, you had to go to your date table, you had to uh, mark it as a date table. This was the previous way of doing it, and I have explained it in other videos. But when you use these calendar options, you don't need to do that. Uh, you just need to mention which calendar option you are going to use. So I don't need to say mark as date table, but what I'll do is I'll go and create my measures. Now I create my measures right over here. So. I'll click on create measure. I'm going to call this measure sales year today fiscal. Uh, I will also create one for calendar standard calendar as well. So the way that this works is that uh, I'll write the calculate function. Uh, and in the calculate function, I say, well, I'm calculating some of the sales amount. This is the value I'm calculating. But then the function that provides me dates year to date is called dates YTD. Dates YTD function that I provide here, I need to specify the date and within that I can just say fiscal, right? And this means that I'm using the fiscal calendar to do this calculation. And just this by itself is good enough to calculate fiscal year to date. I'll copy that because I want to do the same thing for standard as well. So I'll click check mark, then I'll create another one exactly like this one but I would call it a standard or calendar so this would be standard and I would call it a standard and you see that this already detects my calendar options as well hit the check mark now I'm going to show you this in here uh, the fiscal one here wouldn't make much sense because um, this has a normal quarter year to dates in it but I'll add first the standard one so that you can see how this works so by adding the standard one here you can see that these values are accumulating I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see the values are accumulating so this $900,000 is actually accumulated value of these two or $1,400,000 is accumulated of these three and this keeps going until the end of the years you see here is month 12 of that year and it starts increasing again. This is normal calendar year to date type of things. Whereas if this was a um, fiscal calculation, now bringing fiscal calculation here might make things misleading. I might need a different visual, but I'll bring it here first and then I'll show you it in a different visual. So I'll add this one. You see this one fiscal year to date value is keep going increasing until here and this is actually month June so it increased until end of month June and then it starts again in July because that is what we said in our date table that the month starts in July uh, whereas the normal calendar year to date really starts at month 12 so that way I actually created a fiscal year calculation not only that this was possible previously with adding an option in dates year to date uh, for end of fiscal year now with this even if your fiscal year and quarter are like totally different from normal calendar options like for example fiscal year starts in august you can still have that calculation the way that it works is that i'll create a copy of this bring it in here and in this one i'll remove the standard year to date i'll remove month quarter year instead I'll bring fiscal values so let's say I'll bring fiscal year I'll bring fiscal quarter and fiscal month now if I go and um, and you can see this starts from fiscal year 2006 July is the first month of that year now if I go and say well in my power query we consider August to be a start of fiscal year um, and I'm going to change that in my Power Query editor so that August becomes a start of fiscal year um, not for the date table of course I'm going to do uh, not for the sales table I'm going to do that for the date table so here I would say let's make August month 8 as a start of fiscal year all the calculation changes here 
I'll close and apply. Now I don't need to change anything in Power BI DAX calculation. They would all work with this. Now, when you look at this data, and we are waiting for this to refresh, the first month of this, which is July 2005, still should be considered as fiscal year 2005. And then the second month, August 2005, should be considered in fiscal year 2006, uh, once this loading is finished. And normally it doesn't take that much time. My computer is running some background operations. That is why this is taking uh, a little bit of time. Then you'll see that this calculation works without us needing any changes in the DAX operation side of things. So waiting for this, here it is. So as you can see, the very first month is actually month uh, July, which is considered as the 12th month within the quarter four of 2005. I can actually bring the month name so that you can see it too. So if I bring the month name over here, you can see that too. So month July is the last month of 2005. So it does not accumulate with anything because that is the last month. But August, since August, you see that year to date calculation adds all the way goes into end of July next year. And then again, restarts at uh, August next year. Similar to this, if you want to do quarter to date calculation, uh, all of those that needs to be changed in is the function itself, dates QTD or dates week to date. All of these changing just with the fact that here you'll mention what calendar you are using. This is a really nice approach to have multiple calendars and use it. It takes a little bit of time to set it up, but once you have this set up, it's much easier to use. It is preview at the time of recording this video. Hopefully it will be GA by the time you are watching this. Um, my name is Urzarat. We do record Power BI and Microsoft Fabric videos and publish it in our YouTube channel. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on these subjects. Until the next video, bye.